we're on our way to the jetty to look at all the construction machinery yeah. for Sammy because he really wanted to see them. Right, ever since we saw that dump truck yesterday, he just keeps on asking to go see it. So hopefully there's something to see. Looks like today we're actually gonna have some sun again. So it yeah. should be a beautiful day to be at the beach. Walking back to our campsite, we thought that we'd talk a little bit about what it's like staying at state parks versus RV parks. Yeah, some of the pros and cons between the two. We really like staying at state parks because there's lots of nature and stuff to do. And we really like to be surrounded by nature. That's what the priority is for us over amenities. Because at state parks, it really depends on what you get. It depends on the park. Yeah, like. Cape Disappointment State Park where we're at right now, it, they have either full hookups or partial or none at all. And the site that we're in right now has none at all, but it's a really good site because it's so close to the beach. Right. And so we're willing to put up with no hookups so that we can have a quick access to the beach. That's right. And like John said, you know, it depends on the state park. Some parks don't have hookups at all. You just need to find out when you're going to a park, you need to find out what they offer. But um, that's the thing with state parks. You can guarantee full hookups and usually they don't have very many amenities as well. So like you probably won't have laundry services there and you probably won't get the pool. You'll probably find restrooms and showers. Mm -hmm. But that's usually about that. Sometimes there will be a playground, sometimes most of the time not even. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider, you know, if you and your kids are into nature and you like beach or hiking or being out in the nature, your know, state parks are great. If you prefer all the amenities, however, you probably are better off going to an RV park. Also, I think it's not a concern for us because our motorhome is 32 feet but I know that a lot of state parks have, I don't know, is it 35 feet maximum length? So if you have a big rig, you might have also a hard time getting into a state park. So if you're planning your trip, you need to really check into it ahead of time because it might turn out that your options are gonna be limited. And as far as RV parks go, they're usually in convenient locations next to tourist attractions. And so they're good in that you don't have to drive very far to get to your destination. Right, but that tends to make them more pricey also than state parks. Right, but then they also have full hookups. Right. You know, you can have sewer and electric and water, and they also usually have some little activities you can do, like miniature golf or a swimming pool or a playground. Right, they will have laundry so you can have a washer and dryer if you need to do that. And a lot of the time they will have like a little tiny convenience store or you know, some stuff like that. Yeah, gift shop usually. And so they usually are also a very good option for people with big rigs because they usually can accommodate any size of the rig and like state parks that have limitations on length. Yeah, so depending on what you're wanting to do on your trip, you can choose between one or the other or you can mix and match like we on this trip. We stayed at both. We stayed at the private RV parks and we're also staying at a state park right now. 
and you know it just our choices depend on what was available in the area and what was a need at the time but definitely if you want to get out and enjoy nature and scenery then definitely go for the state parks i'm repairing the kite after trying to make some modifications yesterday as i was modifying it it snapped in half and uh, so <laughs> now i'm trying to fix it it works anyway so are you works. happy with it yes very happy with it look at that it's looking pretty good I hear John is trying to attach GoPro to his kite. See if that works. The GoPro makes the kite a little bit too heavy. So I kind of have to walk with it because it's not windy enough to keep it up without moving. Well, we don't have a drone, so this is <laughs> this is the other option. <laughs> GoPro on a kite. <laughs> Which kite number it is? What kite? Um, one. Does the one that never never made flight count? I don't know. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, fourth, fourth, fourth try. So you can feel the sand on your toes? Yeah. We had a really good time at the beach, but it's getting a little stormy. Cooking dinner. Kay, if you be really careful picking them up. 